Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking about episode 9 of season 2 of Ultimate Spider-Man called House Arrest. And, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's a little uh, sore today. Uh, this is another episode that's got an okay idea at the core. It's just uh, ultimately, it's, it's really a very thin episode is really the best way to put it. And to kind of give you an idea of uh, how thin it is, our uh, villain this episode who we're introduced to, Grizzly, I really got nothing to say about him. I mean, uh, he certainly does look a lot less ridiculous than his counterpart in the comics, who is really just a guy in a bear suit with his face cut out. I mean, <clears throat> the only problem is, the and it's even lampshaded by Spider, that he's just a crook in a biomechanical suit that is, for some inexplicable reason, shaped like an animal. And there's really nothing more to him than that. Now, uh, getting into the, the real uh, meat, quote-unquote, of this episode, we see the amazing friends who, despite Aunt May being gone for the weekend, for some reason feel the need to lounge around the house in their powers. Even the amazing friends who know that a bunch of people are going to be coming over to the house shortly. I mean, seriously, guys, why are you doing this? Why don't you just go to your room and put on your civvies? I mean, Peter at least has the excuse that he has no reason to think that anybody is going to be coming over. And, um, uh, let me see here. So this all, of course, uh, results in, uh, you know, I don't need to explain the episode to you. you if you're watching this, ep this review, you've probably watched the episode. So after Nova goofs up and uh, turns the whole house against them in what feels like, you know, the sort of plots that have been swiped from uh, a lot of really lame, dumb movies. Uh, you know, the, their own house security system is trying to kill them, because apparently S.H.I.E.L.D. never foresaw uh, their security system having a flaw that could potentially kill the people inside. So much for whole, that whole Coulson's thing of, uh, we think of everything. Well, gee, Principal Smart Guy, why didn't you think that, uh, you know, maybe they're... Uh, Nova or one of them would fiddle around with the security system and it might try and kill them. I mean, if you are if you have the foresight to build an extra house that, uh, that they might destroy it, just because they're teenagers, don't you have the, the idea that maybe the teenagers might break the freaking security system? <sighs> now, okay, I will give this episode credit. Peter's line about, I think we made the furnace mad. Okay, that was a good one. Uh, it reminded me of that uh, famous internet story that... Uh, you have angered the gazebo. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it, because seriously, that's a pretty hilarious story. Okay, now our characterization this episode, um, admittedly quite thin. I do like the fact that they do they do show that Peter feels some jealousy towards Nova, that he, you know, he's seen these two, and as we have seen previously, Nova and Aunt May really do seem to get along quite well. And here we see that Peter even said, pretty much says, you know, he's feeling kind of jealous that he doesn't have that sort of bond, that easy bond that uh, Sam seems to have. That he feels like she's taking Aunt May, he's taking Aunt May away from her. And Sam, you know, he he just feels, uh, he even says, you know, he hasn't had anybody who he could really consider family in a long time, and he genuinely likes Aunt May. He likes having someone like that in his life, and is jealous of the way Peter has that familial connection to her. He's had Aunt May around his whole life. So, that's, that's some nice, that's a nice touch there. That's a nice parallel between the two characters. And, I like how Peter even acknowledges, like, okay, I was being kind of a jerkweed there. So again, that was some that was all right. Now we do see little touches there with the rest of the amazing friends. We get to some insight into how Power Man's invulnerability is not all it's cracked up to be. He has to turn water to the absolute to the point where it's almost bo where it's practically boiling in order to fill any warmth from a from a hot shower. You know, the sort of simple thing that we all take for granted. And uh well, Maybe me not so much, because I uh, had my shower break and was without hot water for about two months, and boy, did that suck. Oh boy. Anyway, um, we also get to see Iron Fist, uh, you know, acknowledging the P Peter that he 
feels genuine, serious gratitude for him, just for simply allowing him to sleep on his floor. And you know, White Tiger has her moment where she really wanted to wrap up that present, the uh, picture of them all together, and was really very adamant, along with Nova, about it being a surprise for Peter. And these are all nice moments. But the thing is, they're very rushed, they're, and there's really not enough time to really let these ideas do their job, I guess is the way that I, the best way that I can put it. And honestly, you know, apart from throwing out a couple of lines here, there was really no point to anything that happened with MJ and Flash. It was just, they were there to be a complication, and they were a fairly minor one. I mean, really, the, the Amazing Friends didn't have to do anything in order to resolve that. And, um, yeah, that, of course, brings us to our big uh, conclusion, where apparently every single person in the Parker's neighborhood is completely deaf and blind. I mean, I, I really don't think I need to expand on why this is stupid. I mean, it's just so blazingly obvious. I mean, all I think I could really do is just sputter my disappointment and perhaps even small degree of indignation that they would treat me as a member of the audience like I'm stupid. Now, again, I understand that the show is aimed at kids. You know, kids probably somewhere between 6 and 10. All right, that's fine. This, this, they aren't aiming the show at guys my age. I understand that. But here's the thing. Kids that young... They're not they're not stupid either. I mean, even if I had been watching this as a kid, I'd be like, wait a minute, how come nobody in Peter's neighborhood notices or hears any of this from a house being destroyed to all these to a friggin' house being dropped in the middle of their neighborhood? How come nobody notices this? I mean, even as a kid, that would have been glaringly obvious to me. And, you know, never mind the whole wow, how in the world did this not blow their secret identities too? So yeah, folks, that's, apart from really just continuing to ramble on about the, some of the really shoddy writing in this episode, I really don't think that I have anything I can add to what I've already said. Also, my throat's still a little bit sore. So I am going to call that here. As always, folks, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and of course you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time.